Hi, it's Taylor T. Carlson. It's been a while, but I'm back with another video. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to jump tall buildings in a single bound. Of course, we're talking about Superman. Starting today, I'm going to be doing a trio of videos ranking DC Comics films, and I thought we'd start out with The Man of Steel. Superman has been around since the 1930s, and while these days I wouldn't say the character has fared as well cinematically as, say, Batman, the character is certainly still popular, and even though it's been a while since we've seen the character on the big screen, I have no doubt we're going to see more movies in the future. For this list, we are only looking at theatrically released feature films. Therefore, this list will not include TV shows, it will not include direct-to-video films, animated films, or anything of the like. I am also not including any films in which Superman is part of an ensemble cast and plays a relatively minor role in the film, and I'm also not including films in which he's relegated to a cameo. I'm also not including any of the older released material that was in theaters that was later adapted to TV, so there won't be any George Reeves content on this list, although I do love the man's performance as Superman. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with this countdown. At the absolute bottom of this list, we have Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. This is not only the worst film ever made starring the character of Superman, it's one of the worst films ever made, period. This movie was put out by Canon Films, who were known for low-budget, exploitative productions. People probably know them best for all the Death Wish sequels. Does this sound like the kind of company you'd want handling Superman? If you answered no, you're absolutely right. The special effects are absolutely terrible, easily the worst in the series. You can see black curtains in the distance that are supposed to represent the vastness of space. A lot of the other special effects are very easily visible. The performances are bad. Everyone just seems bored. The basic plot is laughable. They overly simplify a story involving getting rid of nuclear weapons, which, if handled appropriately, this could have been an absolutely wonderful tale. And of course, you have John Cryer, later famed as Alan on Two and a Half Men, and he stars as Lex Luthor's nephew, who's probably the worst 80s stereotype you will ever see in a film. This is not a good movie. There are next to no redeeming qualities with it, if any at all. Next up on our list, and only a very small step up from the previous film, is Superman 3. Here, the filmmakers couldn't decide if they wanted to make a Superman movie or a Richard Pryor comedy. This movie completely fails at both. To be fair, the movie does have a few good ideas, including an evil Superman that our hero has to fight against, and it's the only film in the original quadrilogy that does not feature Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor. Unfortunately, the main villain here is pretty much a carbon copy of Luther, despite that. And the movie can't decide what it wants to do, what it wants to be. Superman should not feel like a supporting character in his own movie. Next on our list, we have Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. When the best thing you can say about a movie is that it's better than Superman 3 and Superman 4, that's not very endearing. This movie is less interested in its titular duel and a lot more interested in a bunch of irrelevant subplots that feel half-finished and make no sense. To give you an idea of what I mean, there's one scene in the middle of the movie where Batman's out in the middle of the desert in an abandoned city and he's fighting guys that have Superman patches on their jackets. Why? The world may never know. To be fair, when we get to the actual duel, it's pretty fun even if the final third of the movie just descends into CGI hell. Ironically, the best thing about this movie is probably Wonder Woman's presence in it, who the movie kind of shoehorns in. I'm not too fond of the fact they tried to force so many characters into this movie, but she definitely shines and should do a lot better in her own movie. As far as Superman goes, he doesn't really get much of a chance to shine here, and it's just, it's a dark, brooding film that's just no fun at all, and... I find myself coming back to this one less than I do most of the other movies featuring Superman. Next on the list we have Superman Returns. This was director Brian Singer attempting to take the franchise back to its roots. 
It was the first film featuring Superman in two decades, and the film features Brendan Routh as Superman. He has the look of Christopher Reeve, but unfortunately, none of the charisma. A lot of the people in this movie just feel miscast and disinterested. The whole thing feels big, dull, and lifeless. The one person having any fun with his role is Kevin Spacey as Lex Luthor, who I actually wish could have played this part more than once, but at a two and a half hour runtime and just a dark brooding tone throughout, it's just not that much fun to watch. The film functions as a loose sequel to Superman and Superman 2, completely ignoring parts 3 and 4, and rightfully so, but Again, it just feels like it's bogged down and bound by the presence of greatness in older films, and the movie never quite reaches that greatness on its own. Next up, we have Man of Steel, the reboot and the first film in the DCEU. This was the first movie to feature Henry Cavill as Superman, and he definitely breathes new life into the role. The movie also has General Zod as its villain rather than the overused Lex Luthor, which is a step in the right direction, played very well here by Michael Shannon. And there are definitely some great moments in this film. It does try to recreate Superman as something of a dark, brooding character, which that character was never really about. That said, I would say this was still the best solo Superman movie since the 1970s and early 80s when it came out. It's not a great film, but I would still put it a lot higher than almost anything else on this list. At the number two spot on our list, we have Superman the Movie, the original Christopher Reeve movie from 1978. This movie is perfectly cast. It's got memorable sequences. Lex Luthor, portrayed by Gene Hackman, is definitely one of the all-time great cinema villains, even if his performance is a little campy and dated by today's standards. Of course, you have Margot Kidder as Lois Lane, and you've got Marlon Brando as Jor-El, Superman's birth father. you got Glenn Ford as Superman's Earth father. While the movie admittedly takes a little time to get going, I appreciate the fact that the writing team and the directorial crew actually decided to focus on character development over action. The result makes the payoffs later in the film that much more rewarding. There have been several different cuts of this movie. The others add in a lot of extra television footage that wasn't in the original theatrical cut. However, the original theatrical version, which itself runs nearly two and a half hours, remains my preferred cut of the movie. And at the number one spot on our list, the best Superman film there is, Superman 2. This movie is not bogged down by an origin story like its predecessor, so it gets to jump right in and start having fun. This is quite possibly Christopher Reeve's best performance in the role. You have General Zod and his fellow evil Kryptonians as the villains. Zod, of course, being played by the always entertaining Terrence Stamp. There are a lot of great character pieces in this movie. You see Superman struggle between whether he wants to continue being a hero protecting Earth or having a conventional romantic life with Lois Lane. It makes for some great cinema. This is easily my all-time favorite Superman movie, and the one I keep coming back to more than any other. Do you agree with my list? What is your favorite Superman movie? What is your least favorite Superman movie? Go ahead and post in the comments and let me know what you think. Just try to keep it civilized. Again, as always, that's all I ask. This has been Taylor T. Carlson, and I will see you on my next video.